Good morning, friends. Um, today, I am going to work on some peppers. A friend of ours gave us a, um, a big batch of peppers, different varieties. And I am going to be canning up some pepper sauce. We like pepper sauce to put on our turnip greens, collard greens, or um, black eyed peas. They're just, um, it's just that vinegary, you know, hotness on there. It makes it taste so good. I think it's a southern thing. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I grew up eating pepper sauce on your greens, um, vegetables, black eyed peas, like I said. You can buy the little bottles. I think it's Tapley's little bottles in the grocery store. But I prefer, when, especially when I get a, ba a batch of peppers, I prefer to make my own. A lot of people make them out of the little red and green skinny cayenne peppers, and they just drop the pods in whole. Um, but what I have is, this is a variety, and he didn't know which was hot, which was not hot, uh, banana peppers. So some are hot, some are not hot. I went ahead and washed them, cut them in half, and got the seeds and ribs out of them because like I've said before, we don't like things really spicy. Um, and then there was some jalapenos. I'm not sure what this is, but it's a hot little fella. So I've washed them. I have um, slit them in half. I took the seeds and the ribs out of the majority of them. And I'm gonna slice those up. Um, but first, what I want to do is get my vinegar. I'm going to use apple cider vinegar into a pot. And you're just going to, like, what you think you're going to need. Sometimes you have leftover. Sometimes you need to add some more because I'm just eyeballing. And to this, whoo, how strong. To this, I'm going to add um, a teaspoon or so, half a teaspoon of salt and about a tablespoon of sugar to it. And then I'm going to just get it on my stove, not on high, just on low to, to warm up. So let me get this on the stove and I'll be right back with you. Okay, <clears throat> I've got that on the stove. I've got pint jars out. I've washed them real good with soap and water. This is not going to be really a hot pack method, so I'm not worried about keeping my jars um, hot. I'm going to put the cold or the room temperature peppers in my jars, and once my vinegar solution gets heated up and the little bit of sugar in there dissolves, I'm going to turn the heat off so it's not going to be piping hot. I'm going to put it into my water bath camp canner with some just warm water and slowly bring it up to a bowl. So I'm not worried about um, everything just being popping hot. So I'm going to bring you over here and I'm going to slice up these um, peppers and as I'm slicing them up I'm just going to put them in the jars. And I just popped up today and Pin my hair back. I don't have any makeup on. Do all my baggy overalls, and I'm gonna get at it. So, don't mind the way I look. Oh, my funnel's in the dishwasher. We may do if this isn't anything messy, wet. So I'm just gonna sit here and slice these up and put them in the jars. I washed six pint jars. And then I've got this little jar here that I'm going to um, do some in just to keep in the refrigerator. So I'm just going to slice these up, fill up the jars, and see where we are.
I have got my jars filled up. I ended up with four pints and then my little bottle. I've taken the vinegar off of the um, eye and just kind of let it just sit here and cool off some. I've got my lids and some warm water. And I just turned my canner on to heat up so it's not boiling hot or anything because I want to put these in some lukewarm water. So I'll bring you over here while I fill these up. Let's see. Let me, let me zoom you in a little bit. Come on, focus. Okay. okay. Find a big spoon. I'll just get my big dipper and I'll we'll label the vinegar into this. Squish it down some. This warm liquid over here will make the pepper soften up, shrink down some. This is an, an exact science on um, the vinegar that I've got. I don't know if it's going to be enough or if I'm going to need to heat up some more. y'all know this morning when I first got up I emptied the dishwasher and loaded it back up when it's canning season it's all you do wash dishes wash dishes Let me set these over here fill up my little bottle I think I'm just gonna pour it Where am I? I'm here. Okay. Making a mess. That's why I always put down a dish towel when I'm canning because inevitably I'm going to make a mess. Air bubbles out. I'm on my last roll of paper towels. I'm just going to dip this in some water. Clean the rims. Jump out. Just gonna put these on finger tight, and I'm gonna get them into the hot water bath, warm water bath right now. Bring it up to a boil, and I'm going to once it gets to a boil. I'm just going to water bath these for about 15 minutes. I'll bring you back then. I'm going to show you what I've done this morning. I went ahead with some more of the um, pears that I had where I made pear preserves. 
um, on my last video, I think. I think it was my last video. But anyway, I cut up some more because my husband wanted some like his granny used to make, which means no cinnamon, no nutmeg, no seasoning whatsoever, just the sugar in the pears. So I, let me show you, diced them up. I think I had eight cups of diced up pears, and I put four cups of sugar, and I just put them in my crock pot. Um, I don't have time to mess with these right now, so I've just got these on, and I'm just going to let them cook all day. And then I'll can these up hopefully tonight if they're ready, um, so he can have some like his granny made, or his grandmother made. I don't think he called her granny. I think he called her grandmother. And I have got this many pears left. I don't know what I'm going to do with those. I don't think it's enough to make a big batch of pear butter. Um, so I don't know. If you got any ideas, let me know. But And those are the smaller ones. Um, you know, these are the Dickens to peel pears, or they have such tough skin. And these are very hard pears. So they are very hard to um, peel. So I, I just went around and I got the bigger ones to peel and chop up. So what I'm left with is a bunch of little humdingers over here um, to do something with. So I don't know. I may make, make a small batch of peach butter. I don't know yet. So stay tuned. I've got the cans um, in my canner. The water was just barely warm. So I've got them submerged with about this much over the top, inch, two inches. Um, I've got it on high, so I'm just going to bring those up to a boil. And like I said, once they start boiling, we will set the timer for 15 minutes and then they'll be done. Okay, while those are boiling, I've decided to tackle another project to get my counters cleaned off. I had a half a loaf of bread left over um, from bread that I made last weekend that we didn't eat didn't get it into the freezer or anything so I'm gonna chop this up and make breadcrumbs out of it and we'll make Italian breadcrumbs out of it and I've got my I just preheated my oven to 250 I've got a sheet pan with a seal pad on the bottom and I am just going to cut this up doesn't have to be even it doesn't have to be just all perfect this is a pretty dull knife <clears throat> but I will get these into the oven to be drying out And then I'll put them in, once they're fully dried out, I'll put them in my blender with some Italian seasoning. And blend them up. Put them in a mason jar with a tight lid. I've already got some um, just plain breadcrumbs. Or I may put these in my food saver. Anyway, I've got some that's already the yeast. Mm. <clears throat> some plain ones in my pantry already, so I'm going to make these Italian. To use in recipes. So this is easy breezy. You just kind of get them spread out into a somewhat even layer. And then I'm going to pop these in the oven. And my oven preheats. And I'm not sure how long it'll take, but I will tell you. And get these totally dry and hard. And then we'll blend them up in the blender and make breadcrumbs. And just picture this. And let's see how much 
I think we'll be surprised what little amount of breadcrumbs I'll have, but that's okay because I can keep adding to it. So we'll do that. <clears throat> As soon as I hear the beep on my oven, stick those in there. And I'm still waiting on my water to heat up on my water canner. <sighs> this is a very unscripted video, but I'm just bringing you along for my morning. Um, I've decided I've got these bell peppers left. They've been washed. And then I have a little bag here that I had in the freezer that is orange and red bell peppers that I cut into strips for like fajitas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these bell peppers up in strips, transfer to a bigger freezer bag, and put these in so we can have them for, you know, fajitas, something like that. So I'll show, I'm sure you've seen cutting up um, bell peppers before, but I just kind of go around the edge. Got my big compost pile going over there. Try not to get a bunch of the seeds. Get that seed pit in there. And it ain't always successful. We are supposed to have a gully wash of rain this weekend. It's really dark outside, <clears throat> so I think it's heading here. I wanted to get my garlic in the ground, so I'm going to have to see. I don't want to plant them in a saturated dirt for fear of mildew. So we'll have to see how it goes this weekend. I've never had um, garlic in my garden, which we've never had a really big garden. I may have said this before in one of my videos. My father-in-law has always been a big gardener and he shares the fruits of his labors with us. We've had small gar gardens. We did um, container garden this this year just did tomatoes and bell peppers and <clears throat> I did some um, little sweet passion melons it's kind of like a cantaloupe and that's about it but I'm expanding he's getting a little older and it's it's harder for him to be, do the big gardens now and so we're going to branch out and start doing some over here at the house. Out in the pastures, there's some wild growing garlic that we have harvested. And um, I am a city girl gone country. And the only thing about me that has not done gone totally country is the fear of snakes so if there if it's grassy tall or whatever and looks snaky mm -mm. Kathy ain't going I've asked for years for some snake boots nobody takes me serious though um, and that's one thing where the garlics come out is outside of the fence of one of the small pastures and they don't keep it trimmed down and it is so grown up in tall grasses I fear for my life going in there I have an utter fear of snakes so I want to get some going over here where I'm not just petrified to get it <laughs> but I guess everybody has a Fear of snakes. These are not very big bell peppers, so it's not big long strips. But it'll work. I haven't 
seen a whole lot of snakes out here. Seen a couple of rattlesnakes. Had a rattlesnake in our driveway. I was coming home from work and I saw birds like on the ground and they were looking at something and I slowed down and I was like, oop, that's a snake. But it wasn't moving and I thought, hmm, is it dead? So I got out a safe distance, got my phone out and kind of zoomed in and it was like, it's a rattlesnake. And so I called my husband and I was like, there's a rattlesnake out here in the driveway. It was off the driveway in the grass area. And um, he came down there with a shovel and took care of him. And don't, don't give me no hate comments about killing a snake. We had, I had two dogs out there trying to get to it and I didn't want them to be bit because my yard belongs to my dogs. And you can't tell me that, well, we're intruding on the snake's habitat because it's not really the snake's habitat. I don't want my dogs to get snake bit. And seen one, this is a funny story. And my father-in-law, across the street is where my in-laws live. There's directly across the street, my in-laws live there. Next to them is a big pasture and then they're born. And there was I believe it was a chicken snake that was in his chicken coop that he got and took care of it and he put it over the pasture fence. Something about, I think it's more rattlesnakes, but it's something about if you kill a snake in the country, you're supposed to like drape it over your pasture fence. I don't know what the, the folk tale or whatever that is about that, but well, the next day, He went out on his front porch and there was a snake draped across his front porch. So he went in and got a broom. He knew it wasn't a poisonous snake. It was a chicken snake or corn snake or something like that. So he got his broom and he went out there and he was just going to sweep it off of the porch. And he went to sweep it and it wasn't moving. And he got to looking, and that was the same snake that was, I mean, his chicken coop is not next to his house. There's a big pasture in between it. But it was that same snake. And so we were, like, freaking out. How did this dead snake come to be on his front porch? And we know, and he didn't tell nobody about it. The only person he told about it was a um, guy, Willie, that works at his shop. And he ter terrified of snakes. He wouldn't have touched it with a 10-foot pole, de dead or not. And he didn't tell anybody else about it. So we can't figure out. It's still a mystery today of how that snake got to be on his front porch after it was dead. And he knows it was dead. And even if he didn't know, it, was, even if it was half alive, how did it crawl across that big pasture and get on his front porch? It's weird, man. Weird. But, you know, but common sense tells you somebody had to have done that. Nobody's owned up to it. This has been several years ago. Okay, got all these chopped up. I'm put these in the freezer bag along with my red and pretty red and orange ones. And we'll have these for a stir fry, fajitas, something around those lines. And it'd be delicious. I love bell pepper. I love the flavor of bell pepper. I love it in recipes. I'm just going to zip this up to about an inch left. I'm going to squeeze the air out. Roll it up, get as much of the air out. I could get out my food saver for this, but it's a lot of trouble to get out for just that. So these go in the freezer. I have warmed me up some coffee that had gotten cold. 
And while that is still in the water bath, I got my fall home preservation cookbook out. This is the Bible to canning. And I'm sitting here trying to think what I could do with those pears. So I just went back into the glossary here, index, the index, and got the peas, looked at the pear, and I thought, let me see if there's anything that looks good that I can make with the rest of those. And I found a recipe. It's called peppery, peppery pear salsa. So, came over here, found it, peppery pear salsa. The ingredients are white vinegar, um, chopped up pears, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, sugar, salt, dry mustard, ground turmeric, ground allspice, and freshly ground pepper. I've got all that, those ingredients. It says sweet juicy pears combined with red and green peppers to create a carnival of color in this tantalizing spicy salsa. Use it as a dipping sauce for grilled flatbreads or as a breakfast condiment with eggs. It also works well with grilled meat or poultry. Hmm, that sounds good. I don't understand how it's tantalizingly spicy. I guess it's not, not heat spicy because you're using bell peppers, but I guess because of the, the spices that are in it. So I'm going to bookmark this, and that might be, I don't know if I got, it says eight cups of pears. I may have eight cups. Okay, we're going to try that. Not today. But we are going to try that as our next endeavor. Okay, now then, we are, I've got my bread out of the oven. It is super hard, crunchy. And I, let me show you. I got the pepper sauce out. Oh, that's hot. But anyway, that's what that looks like. This will be a great for my pantry. This will last forever. And then I'm going to put this little bottle in. When it cools off, put it in the refrigerator for us to use now. And so I'm going to get to work on my breadcrumbs. I've got my handy dandy blender out. And I'm just going to put these breadcrumbs in. I'm not going to make a whole lot, but as I get more breads that start to go stale, I can add to it. Get all the little pieces, all the crumbs that was already made on the bottom. Get my seal pat and just now, when I took these out of the oven, it took, well, I said I was going to time it for you, and I didn't. I guess it took maybe 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes. I ended up, I had the oven on 250, and I went to fill it, and there was just a couple in the middle that was still kind of soft. So, I turned the oven up to 300 and let it cook for a few minutes more. So, to this... I'm just going to add maybe a quarter, well, maybe not, eighth cup, eighth teaspoon of salt. And then I've got this McCormick Organic Italian Seasoning. And I'm going to put a teaspoon. I want quite a teaspoon. Let me, a little bit more. Then we're just going to put the lid on, plucked up, give it a whirl. I'm just going to be pulsing it. Oh, 
still some chunky in there. Okay, that looks good. See how much came, it came down? Then I've got a cannon jar, which is the purple that I love. Let me set this down so I'm a messy girl. It smells heavenly. It almost smells like fresh bread bacon. Well, it's going to make more than what I thought. I thought it would probably be about a pint size. But it looks like it's going to be a full quart. Yep. How about that? My measurements have been on point today. With my vinegar, my jars, I had the perfect amount. And, ta-da! Now that I'm going to leave the top out of it, there's a little warmth to it. Not much at all, just from the blender. And so I'm going to leave the top off of it and just give it a shake every once in a while. Make sure it's all cooled down before I'm just going to use one of these um, plastic lids to go on top of it. But I'm going to leave it out. And so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I got my pepper sauce done. I got breadcrumbs done. Um, I've got pears in the crock pot that's going to take all day i'm not going to show you that process because we did that the other day um and i've got an idea for my next recipe with the with the pears to make that um spicy pear salsa um i think that'd be really interesting so thanks guys for hanging out with me again today i've got my dishwasher still rolling and then i got a sink full of dishes i'm telling you what during canning season, preserving and putting up. Me and my son was just talking about their, when they build a house, he's going to have two dishwashers. And I was like, I wish I had two dishwashers. That would be awesome. So, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. And I'll be back with you next time. Um, I've got some more preserving that i got to do. And... I'm not going to do it today. I've got to get some stuff cleaned up in the house. and But I'll see you back in a few days. Thanks.